So as I make my way up, I just want to give a shout out to Sony, in particular Mark Baber, and thank them for sponsoring this video. Hi, I'm Glyn Dewis and I'm a portrait photographer, except uh, for the past year, can't believe it's a year already, uh, I've not been able to take any portraits whatsoever since the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and the first kind of lockdown that we went into. But over the years leading up to that, I've taken all kinds of portraits from uh, physiques, athletes, models, bikers, uh, and more recently veterans, in particular World War II veterans. Anyway, in this video I wanted to show you how I have quite literally been keeping creative during COVID. What I've been doing to keep the tools in my hands and to stop the frustration of not being able to take photographs I normally would. And I've done that by starting a landscape photography project. Something I tried before but failed after having taken just the one photo. But to be fair, that was because my World War II veterans project called the 39 to 45 Portraits Project took over and started gaining quite a lot of momentum. Portraits have now been taken by Litchfield-born photographer Glyn Dewis as part of his 3945 project to try and photograph all surviving World War II veterans. As far as I saw it, whenever they did have pictures, it was always pictures that were taken when they were at events. So I wanted them to have a portrait that was something that looked timeless and that you know could be passed on to them, could be passed on to their families for generations to come. Now, talking of that project, I can... I can hand on heart say that in the past three years, actually two years if we forget uh, 2020, we could all do with forgetting 2020, I've learned more about portrait photography than any other time in my portrait career. I've learned massively that a big part of taking a successful portrait is by slowing down, taking time to get to know that person and talk with them, to build a connection. Um, I'd say probably 80% of the time, if not more, of my time taking portraits was spent talking to that person and just a small portion of it um, actually doing the portrait itself. Now what's really surprised me with this landscape photography project after the initial uh, flurry and confusion of getting out there on the first few shoots is how much of an overlap there is between landscape photography and portrait photography and that might sound really crazy to say because they are completely at other ends of the spectrum. But when I thought I was coming out to learn something new, I don't know if I really am. I don't know if I'm learning something new. I'm seeing different things, admittedly, but as for learning a new skill, I don't know. Now for me to best explain that, see where I'm coming from, I guess I should really explain what my process is when it comes to taking portrait photos, because um, what I'll tend to do, let's say if I was gonna photograph you, and it was the first time we'd met. What I would ordinarily do is arrange that you would have a friend or family member there with you, because that's gonna help with uh, you feeling comfortable and feeling safe, which is obviously very, very important. But when I come to your house, which is where invariably, if we're talking about the veterans, the portraits are taken, I leave all the kit in the car. Every single bit of kit stays in that car, so that when I knock on the door, when you open the door to me, you are not greeted by somebody laden down with loads and loads of kit. Because if you're feeling anxious about having your picture taken, that isn't going to help at all. So I'll leave everything in the car. We'll go into the house. You'll maybe offer me a tea or a coffee. And even if I don't want one, even if I've not long had one, I will still have it. Because that's an excuse for us to just sit there and just chat about anything and everything, except maybe even not even bother talking about the photo shoot. We'll talk about all kinds of things. And that conversation could go on for, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes, maybe even longer. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is the reason for that conversation. And that's that we feel comfortable with each other. Feel comfortable with each other. We get to have a bit of a good conversation going, maybe even a bit of laughter. Blimey, that sun's coming out. That's lovely. Um, when I get then feel that we're getting on and things are comfortable, that's then when I'll get the actual camera out. I'll say, look, hold on, let's... Tell you what, the reason I'm here is to take a picture. I'll then go to the car, get the kit, set up, and it's a really small footprint of space that I need for it. But as I'm setting up, I'll keep the conversation going so that there's no kind of empty time that you're gonna fill your head with thinking of having your portrait taken. 
So that's the kind of thing that I'll do, just spend my time, and that's the key thing, spend my time just getting to know you, getting to know each other. Uh, and what's been amazing is how me bringing that kind of uh, workflow, for, bent of a better, for want of a better phrase, into my landscape photography, how that has made such a difference and so quickly, a dramatic difference. I'll explain what I mean in a moment. Actually, this, is, this really is a nice day. I'm gonna go further up. Let's just pack this kit up. But as we're going up there, uh, let's talk about success. Success in a portrait shoot. What is a successful portrait shoot? Is it the composition, the lighting, the expression? Is that it? Or is a successful portrait shoot when you have a relative or somebody who knows the person you photographed, look at the portrait and go, that is so them. Or a relative saying, we'll treasure this portrait you took forever. You see, when we get that kind of reaction, what we're doing there is we're sparking off a memory. You know, we're remembering how somebody spoke, we're remembering being in certain places, remembering laughter. We even remember the certain smells of somebody. My granddad always used to wear brill cream and whenever I smell brill cream, I always think of my granddad. But is that any different to what landscape photography should be like? I don't think so. A landscape photograph should be able to make you remember the location what it was like, the sounds, the smells, the time of day, the weather, everything about it, just in what you've captured. Now I've had exactly the same feeling doing my landscape photography. Once I'd started to take the time to slow down and get to know where I was, I've had exactly the same feeling. I mean, how could you not? Now, I'm not a wise person, far from it, but I have come up with a mnemonic, a three-letter mnemonic that kind of helps me have more success with my landscape photography, bringing over what I kind of would ordinarily do in my portrait photography. And I call it the SIR principle, three letters, S-I-R. So the S stands for small, think small. Now, if we think back to the pictures that I used to do, the portraits when I would edit them, I used to spend hours on them, literally hours, and there'd be layer upon layer in Photoshop. I kind of enjoyed it at the time, but that's where it ended. It didn't really get me, if that makes sense. Now, when I stripped things back to basics and concentrated on one light source, it became much more enjoyable. The photo shoot felt different. I was able to concentrate more on the person than on the technicals. It was the connection, the result of it, that got me. So what do I mean by thinking small in landscape photography? Well, back in 2018, that's when I first started to try out my landscape photography project, but it ended up being just the one picture. But when I look back at taking that one picture, when I first was gonna give this landscape photography a go, I loved it, but it was a task. I felt that I had to get a photograph, and that photograph had to be of the vast landscape in front of me. Now, although I say there are crossovers between uh, landscape photography and portrait photography, don't get me wrong, there is still a different kind of mindset there as well, because with a portrait shoot, you go out to do it, you've got to come back with a result. But landscape photography, it's a whole different ball game. You know, if you come out and you don't get a picture, is it really a disaster? Is it the end of the world? I mean, you're out and about in the fresh air. Of course you want to come back with a picture, but there's always going to be a positive with landscape photography as far as I see it. And that's how I see it anyway. I mean, now more than ever, we need this. We need the fresh air, we need to get out and just enjoy probably what we've taken for granted before. All right, so this is my second trip out to try and improve myself as a landscape photographer. And I decided to come to a place called Heartland Key on the North Devon coast. Um, 
I just don't know where to begin. This is a beautiful place, there is no denying it. I mean, when you first come up here, it's quite overwhelming. I mean, the landscape is just incredible. But for me wanting to start out as a landscape photographer, I don't know really if I'm maybe trying to run before I can walk because there just seems too much to choose from, too many places. I found myself walking around, climbing up stuff, which is pretty dangerous around here. Uh, but I just don't know where to, where to start. It's, this is one of the first things probably that I've learned now, massive difference between landscape photography and portrait photography is that as a portrait photographer, which is what I do primarily, I know what I'm gonna get by the end of the shoot. In fact, I know what I'm gonna get before the shoot even starts. I can control everything. Whereas here, you can kind of turn up, you can do your reckeys and try to get the best composition, but even with all the best, you know, planning and prep that you could do, you're still dependent on Mother Nature uh, behaving. So yeah, it's gonna be very much hit and miss. And I guess that's pretty much where every single one of you who's a landscape photographer is gonna kind of say, it's really a, no matter how much you plan, you just don't know if you're gonna get a result. So I stands for Immerse. Now, one of my closest friends is a guy by the name of Ian Munro, who himself is a portrait photographer, but he doesn't take regular kind of portraits. He takes things that were, I guess you'd call them conceptual portraits. His imagination is just off the scale and how he's able to put into a still image what's in his head is beyond me. Absolutely incredible work but he didn't start out as a portrait photographer. He actually start out, started out as a landscape photographer. But in a recent conversation, he actually admitted to me that his passion for it kind of disappeared because he was so determined to take a picture. So much so that when he was out at such an amazing locations, he didn't really enjoy them because he was so focused on what he was seeing through the lens. He wasn't immersing himself where he was. I guess you could say really that Ian became more focused on the destination, the end result, which is the picture, that he didn't enjoy the journey, the surroundings, the place that he was in. Now a similar thing uh, was told to me by another friend of mine called Anthony Carruthers, who said that he was on holiday in Wales, a place called the Gower, which is the most beautiful place. But he said that when he was there, he kind of went off uh, to take a photograph uh, and he was so focused on going to this one particular beach that he walked and walked over all this kind of heathland and and all the kind of sand and what have you and these beautiful old style gates and whatever to get to this place but went to the beach took the picture and then went back realizing that all these amazing places that he'd kind of gone through to get to the beach so he'd be, again he becomes so focused on that destination of getting that picture that he kind of disregarded the journey and wasn't immersing himself in what he had all around him. All right, so we're now at a woodland near to where I, uh, near to where I live. And this is where I got my very first successful landscape photo, but it wasn't of the big vista. It was of something within the landscape. And without me knowing it, I'd got that because I followed the same process that I would do when I'm taking a portrait. So I wanna show you how that happened in this short little video. Thank you. 
All right, so in this video, I wanna show you something that happened yesterday. I actually got a picture I didn't expect, and the way it happened, I think is gonna make a huge difference to my landscape photography journey. So yesterday morning, I headed out nice and early to catch the early morning sunrise. I'd already planned where I was gonna go and I knew exactly the direction in which the sun was going to be coming up. So it was just great to get out and just have a really leisurely meander around a local forest. It was so incredibly relaxing. I kept my camera in my bag, not walking around with it in my hands, just hoping to pounce on something that could be a photograph but instead just kept it in my bag as I just walked around. Now, even though I'd planned it to the point that I knew where to go and what time to go, I guess in the back of my mind, I still was thinking I'd end up getting a picture. So although I was feeling relaxed, I also felt there was a little bit of me that was also searching. I just couldn't seem to release that searching for a photograph. Eventually, I'd gone all the way around the track that I'd intended, and I was pretty much back to where I started. But before I went back to the car, I thought I'd just kind of cut across and go into an area of the forest where there's a wonderful canopy above and just grab a coffee and just stop, stand still and take it all in. And that's exactly where you join me now. I just literally got to this particular point. There was, there was some uh, sun coming through the trees as it was rising in that kind of direction. Light was coming through the trees and I thought I'd get the shot, but I kind of missed it. Didn't have everything ready, so that kind of shot went to nothing. So I thought I'd just park up in this place here, put my bag down and just grab a coffee. Uh, and I guess it was kind of while I was in that state of mind, which was not really thinking about photography, just enjoying the moment. I was kind of just standing here, listening to the birds, kind of listening to the morning wake up. There's all the sounds that you get in the forest of all the little creatures as they're kind of moving around. You can hear the odd break of a branch or the, the sound of a bird singing in the distance, the trees kind of whistling and, um, well, not whistling, but rustling, rustling in the breeze. It was just so, so peaceful. And I think that really did kind of just, just change everything for me because before now, even though on this particular trip I'd come out with the intention of being relaxed, okay? I'd kind of put into my mindset, taken all the advice that I'd gotten off, everybody that had so kindly commented and emailed, um, just come here to enjoy it, have a walk around and really, really enjoy it. But when I got here, having the coffee, my mind's just kind of just drifted off, enjoying being here. Photography was kind of forgot about. Then I'm just looking around, just taking it all in, and that's when I noticed the tree. Now, I hadn't given any thought to the fact that me getting that picture is because I did it in some way like I would take portraits. As far as I was concerned, I'd just stopped to have a cup of coffee and just kind of relax and stop being determined to get a picture. But it was somebody called Mike when I shared this uh, video about how I got that. When I originally shared it, he posted a comment and that comment basically says, so what did you do as a first step? You did a portrait of a beautiful and striking tree. How did you do it? You spent time with it, like walking into the house with all your equipment and having some coffee, but this time with the moss and the leaves on the trees. You then settled in and used your portrait experience to take portraits of the tree. And that was a guy called Mike from the Kelby One community. But I think getting success, if that's the right word to use, for me to get success in landscape photography. I've got to have that same kind of feeling as I do when I go and do a portrait, but also with the landscape, immersing yourself in it so that you completely take it in and thoroughly enjoy it. That's what I'm looking for. 
Now the R of my Sir principle is for repeat. Now thinking of this uh, repeating, going back to the same place again and again, if you kind of relate that to taking portraits, think of a portrait that you've taken. If you could go back and photograph that same person again and again, would you do it differently? I probably hazard a guess to say that you would because you'd notice new things about them. You might kind of change how you're going to photograph them because you kind of think, well, that doesn't really suit their mood or their look or whatever. But just, just by getting to know them more because you're going back to see them again and again, I think that would really make a huge difference to how you photograph them. And a perfect example for me was when I photographed World War II veteran uh, the wonderful David Edwards in Abergavenny in Wales. Now the picture you can see here of David Edwards isn't the picture that I ended up giving to him and his family and it's not the one that I used in the exhibition because I missed something. And what I missed was the angle he was sitting. It was actually hiding his medals and it was really important to show the medals. So that evening I phoned them back up. I phoned David and Diane, his wife, back up to say, could I come back tomorrow? And they said yes, so I drove all the way back to Abergavenny in Wales the following day and took his portrait. And this is the one that I ended up with. Now I got that because I'd immersed myself being there with David, but I'd also repeated it. And by repeating stuff, you notice more things, you notice different things and you get better results. So that is my uh, Sir principle. Slow down, immerse yourself and repeat. And am I having to adapt to what's going on with the COVID restrictions, not being able to take portraits, but now doing landscapes. Am I having to adapt? Do you know, I don't know if adapt is the right word. Um, I'm certainly glad that I'm getting out and keeping the tools in my hand and keeping creative and keeping the gray matter going, but I don't know about adapting because I honestly think that what I was doing with my portraits is really similar to what I'm doing with landscapes. So, um, and all, actually also looking at the, trying to get something really positive, trying, trying to dig down to get something really positive about this whole horrible situation we've all had to live with. Um, the positive for me, the massive positive for me is that it's opened my eyes to other photography. As a, as a portrait photographer, that's generally all I did. So when it came to the times when there were no portraits to take because there was a bit of a break or whatever, I didn't get my camera out the bag but that's going to be completely different going forward because now I am just absolutely loving doing this landscape stuff. And like I said before, I don't really care if I get a picture or not. It is so good to be out, to slow down and to just enjoy what nature has to offer. But there's also other things to photograph. So landscapes, that's always there. I can always come out and do that. But I'm also photographing wildlife. So I'm doing so many different things with, um, with photography and I think I kind of avoided that because I wanted to kind of get known for doing portraits so I didn't do anything else when really why wouldn't I? It's, it's, I could do anything. I can certainly specialise in one particular thing but that doesn't mean to say I can't do other stuff as well. Uh, if I want to be a portrait photographer then I have a portfolio that shows that but the other stuff I just do because I enjoy it and this has really opened my eyes to the benefits of photography. It's so much more than composition and lighting and pixels and kit, although that's obviously very important. It is massive escapism. So yeah, this, this will definitely, definitely continue.